Okay, we ready then? Johnny Vaughan. Radio. Okay, Radio. here we go. Oh, yeah. X. Welcome to the Johnny Vaughan 4 till 7 Fang Podcast. You right, Gav? Yeah, really good. Cracking week. It was. Politically. Only half of the week with Sunter. Then we had a mixture. Well, we had um, uh, Phil. Phil, yeah. And we had Glenn. We had Glenn. And, yep. uh, but we were there, weren't we, Gav? We were both there. Okay. Uh, Full commitment. And I thought we were discussing, we, well, we asked how old Roy Hodgson is. Mm. Uh, and uh, we pointed out he's, he's, uh, he's younger than Mick Jagger. Yeah. Uh, which is an odd thought. That is such a weird it thought. It really is. In fact, we were going, brown sugar. <laughs> well, they'll, you... they'll hear, won't they? Yeah, they'll hear that. Well, they'll hear all that. Yeah, exactly right. I shouldn't redo the gag. You're absolutely right. And can he drive a coach? Yes, he can. Uh, there's also air guitar and nettle eating. Uh, we've got overheard at Waitrose. Oh, yeah, that was great. Which is genius. It's what everyone else does, Gav. They don't even make up material. They just go on the internet, get funny stuff, and just read it out. Do you know what? Even just walking around Waitrose and earwigging. Yes. It's just easy. It's just easy. It is. Uh, but I was more sort of going on about people. Uh, an excellent hero from Gavin and Cyril the Squirrel, plus many, many more. Gav, let's hope they enjoy the uh, the podcast. Yeah. Johnny Vaughan. Radio X. Radio X. You right there, Sunt? Great thing. You right, Sunt? Would you describe yourself as a healthy eater? Yes, I would. You're, ve- you're a veggie, aren't you? But you, yeah. you, 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 you eat. Is that a health decision or animal thing? A bit of both. Okay. What about you, Gav? Because I always, I'm never impressed with people who, 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 um, like Royston in the building. Mm. He's a vegetarian, but that's a health choice. Right. And that's yes. fine. Uh, but then he says, um, he says, don't eat any meat at all. But then he says he eats fish. Mm. Yeah. And my contention is, particularly people who, who won't eat meat because they think it's cruel. Yeah. It's a sort of say, you know, that tuna aren't aren't jumping into nets. You know, no, they're not going. Oh, there's a net there. Excellent. They're not queuing up. Great. <laughs> Tuna don't climb over dolphin to get in there. You know, they're still... An animal. Yeah, I'm not I'm just trying to... I always try and lump them in the same boat as any meat eater. They sort of seem to think that it's all nicely, cleanly caught. But let me tell you, if we were slinging out fishing lines and, 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 and with grass on the end and hooking cows and bringing them in, we'd think it was absolutely <laughs> barbaric. If that was the way sheep were caught. We just <laughs> line put, caught sheep. Yeah, this is line caught sheep with a hook there. And we just reel them in. I mean, it'd be easy for one, a big shoal of fish. Anything line caught is really expensive. Yeah, a shoal of sheep came up. <laughs> Here they come, lads. Get the nets out. And you're just catching sheep in nets between tractors. I'm just saying that people who take their high horse on the, which is an odd analogy, yeah. the high boat, to sort of say, no, but it's fishing. I, I, I think fishing is a bit lower than all the others because they actually reap where they haven't sown mm. and then complain about it. Yeah, they really haven't. Yes. You know, fishermen always complain to the gigging. We basically bought a boat, filled it up with diesel, and we expect to be able to go out there and just let you get money out of the water. <laughs> and they're messing up the whole plan. And put none of it back. And yeah. because these Norwegians, they're taking more out than what we are when we didn't even plant it in the first place. They sort of act like the COs them are living just because they've got a rusty boat, say R, drink a lot when they're on shore, and, and, and they've got, you know, fish. Like Lots of assumptions. You about are fishermen. generalizing heavily there about yeah. all fishermen. All right, fair enough. What else? Who, no, I'm just. All I'm saying is, is that as fish, the vegetarian, in I want to stick up for. The I, know, I, know, I know. I'm just. I, I look. Listen. I, arr, I love her fishermen, but sometimes what you feel like saying to fishermen is that you didn't plant it. Yeah. Okay. It's just British water. It's our waters, and that's sort of fine. Okay. Uh, and they sort of take the high horse. So it's only because I think about things differently to everyone else because that's my job. Okay. If I said the same right, thing... With, with farming then, with like salmon farming and stuff like that because that's kind of like planting. It. Well, yeah, it is, yeah. But I, I don't like... Sometimes I look at battery chickens and I sort of think, well, it, they treat chicken like you can literally... And the way people talk about chickens. I mean, I've known people say, I'm, uh, I, uh, and this is when I used to be my ex who's a vegetarian. Uh, we used to go to Spain or somewhere and they go, she looks like, have you got anything for vegetarians? to go, here's, here's chicken. Yeah. I'm thinking, yeah, because that's kind of a vegetable, isn't it? You just plant an egg in the ground and the chicken grows. That's why its feet look like that. They're actually roots that just come out. Although that's the dream of chicken farmers, frankly. Yeah. Um, but uh, I do think sometimes that for the people who are pescatarians, they kind of look down on, 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 on meat eaters mm. when actually the, the principle's applied. There's nothing like a slaughterhouse is what I'm trying to say to you. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, Big Sai, our leader, he said something outrageous in the office that oh, you'd yeah. never expect the big man of one of the most fightingest men in Surrey to say I mean, it's shocking it shocked me what did he say <laughs> he turned around while I was eating my KFC yeah keeping it real yeah <laughs> eight wings plus six pieces thank oh, you goodness. straight down with seven the wings I think you'll find oh yeah sorry Gav you had one very good point <laughs> uh, but as we were eating my KFC suddenly big sigh 
Yeah, he's, he's, more, he's the manly element of the office, you'd have thought. I always, I always see him as a solid campaign. He goes, he turns around and goes, God, quinoa is really hard to eat with a fork. <laughs> How we laughed. <laughs> <laughs> he was right, though. It's like little pebbles, tr- yeah, isn't it? No, the right. office erupted. You need a spoon. Oh, he is stuff. right, though. <laughs> well, I saw him trying to fork the quinoa yeah, have you tried out edamar- of the cup. Have you tried eating edamame beans with a spoon? <laughs> God, it's a nightmare, Gav. <laughs> Gav also told me, we had a conversation about this in the office, and I just thought I'd write down everyone's quotes. Mm. Uh, Gav's key quote in this argument but just things you'd never expect to hear about food. Is he says, coconut oil is impossible to deep fry chicken wings with. <laughs> I think, yeah, that's not the point, is it though, Gav? So obviously you can't do that. If you can beat quinoa is hard to eat with a fork, um, <laughs> please, we'd love to hear from you. A3, 936. It was a, st- it was a stunned silence at first. This is genius. Thank you so much, Sarah in Maidenhead, for this beauty. A work colleague asked me, when you make your own sushi, do you use a roller or go free-handed? I was eating a Greg sausage roll and drinking a can of Tango at the time. <laughs> Please make your own assumptions as to my answer. <laughs> Earlier on, our leader Simon said that quinoa is hard to eat with a fork. A listener then recommended we went to Overheard in Waitrose, which turns out is a superb steer because it's given us a last link without us having to actually write any content whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. um, Sunta, what we got here? This is genius. Go on, Sunta. Okay, so these are my favourites from this the This is science. on Facebook, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, firstly, All right, Gav, don't keep emphasising the fact we've been lazy about this. <laughs> yeah, we just got these on text. Stolen them. We got them on text. No, Jocasta, that's Daddy's Yakult. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Jocasta. Jocasta. <laughs> I hope it's made up. Carry on. Jeffrey, they appear to have run out of guinea fowl. That's fantastic. <laughs> For heaven's sake, Rupert, it's pronounced quinoa, as we That's all know. That's very good. A, a slip Simon didn't make. Yes. No. Darling, go and sanitise your hands. That camembert you touched was reduced to clear. Oh, that's oh. just... You <laughs> cannot beat that. Go and sanitise your hands. That camembert you just touched was reduced to clear. Yes. And my favourite... Oh. Get a few more tubs of the duck and orange pate. Arabella is anemic and needs the iron. Wow, to cure wow. anemia. Yeah. And good and great detail with the name. The Arabella there is superb. I was going to say thank you for sending that in, but you didn't. This is this is lazy. <laughs> I suddenly realised this is just all everyone else does. They just go on the internet and just, just read out, here's some more ready-made humour. Here's something else I've done nothing to. Radio X. Johnny Vaughan. Gavin. Yes. Were you watching uh, uh, sports news earlier? No. I was. I was listening to the, the, the coverage of there being no trouble. Right. And it was just, I think some of the most patronising coverage I've ever heard. But there was this absolute gem here. And it, it's something, you know, I've been saying to you for ages, just play music outside grounds. That's all you got to do. Just stop all trouble at all. There's what one kind thing, of music? Any music, like just as long as it's music they like. Just play music they like. Or, of course, if it gets really out of hand, Looney Tunes. Yeah. You play that outside my wall, it wouldn't kick. Actually, no, they probably just get frying pans off. Okay, you ready for this? Listen. Well, it's a really fantastic atmosphere here. The authorities here have put up these uh, massive speakers which have been uh, playing English music for the past 24 hours. We've had Oasis, uh, Blur, The Undertones, Verve, The Prodigy, and that has kind of drowned out uh, the chanting that we sometimes get from England fans. Everyone joined in with a bit of Oasis, Blur, The Undertones, Verve, The Prodigy. I mean, basically what he's describing is we've given them a typical hour on your ex. Yeah, I was just thinking that. I mean, they throw (laughs) could have suggested maybe throwing a bit of colour news as well. Yeah, maybe a bit of Tom O'Dell in there. Get some catfish on. Exactly right. Um, But anyway, it was his surprise, and my surprise, that no one's ever thought of this before. (laughs) Yeah, they usually pump really horrible music as torture of some kind, don't they? Yeah, Yeah. it's like psyops when they're trying to get General Noriega out. They play, I forget what it was, wasn't it? Boyzone, Evergreen. I can't, it should have been. Remember. Should have been. Or Westlife, I don't know. But there is a long history of playing certain tunes before football matches. I know there is, but the trouble is, is a lot of those tunes. Dave Clark 5 marked the first time the amalgamation between the football terrace and Yahooli. With like, they were literally writing stuff that just made people want to go steaming in, like that kind of, I'm feeling <laughs> glad all over. Feeling. And then they actually had a record called Bits and Pieces, Bits and Pieces. I mean, Dave Clark 5 essentially, it was just, they're thinking, right, what will they just love on the terrace? What will make them violent? Uh, anyway, later on, I was listening to the, um, I was, uh, the, the guy carried on his report. This is the most patronising thing I've ever heard. Listen. 
The restaurants here are doing a roaring trade. Uh, we've just been into an Italian restaurant and I've seen England fans actually drinking water. Lots of families there uh, enjoying a meal, enjoying glasses of uh, water and also a bit of wine has been drunk. It has been the perfect day so far for England fans here in Saint-Etienne. Which is very, very good news. I'm really enjoying that playlist, by the way, as well. Sort of mid-90s Britpop. Hey! That's what... That's what I loved is that is that after all that report, all the guy he threw back to in the studio could remember was we're enjoying that playlist. By yeah. the way, join us here on Radio X. Isn't that amazing? Uh, England, some England uh, fans even drinking water. I'm sorry, John. We've got reports of water being yes, drunk. Yes, water. water. Yeah, yes. Uh, the same water that's all we're allowed to drink during games. Incredible scenes here. <laughs> yes, if you go to a European game in Britain, it's all you can drink. Ugly scenes. Ugly scenes of water drinking. <laughs> but this idea of, like, some England fans actually drank water. I can't believe they're drinking water. I can't believe they're drinking water. Well, that's scum. <laughs> um, I can't believe it. Anyway, it turns out loads of our listeners have also got shame. I mean, I'm, I'm almost ashamed, Gaff. <laughs> Uh, this is from Lisa in Bromley. She says, uh, Johnny, I regularly go to Chelsea where I drink water, but with the lid confiscated because as a 48-year-old mother of four, I can't be trusted not to luz it at someone when we lose. And that's Lisa from Bromley. To be fair, Lisa, I, we, I've met you at a few games, and actually, in your case, I would say that is <laughs> sensible. No, because she gets emotional. She's the sort of woman who goes, literally walks around the stand afterwards and tries to find the ref. <laughs> she's, yeah, no, no, she's feisty. I mean, she, actually, she's the only fan I've met who I definitely would take the lids off. Um, Radio X. Okay, you ready for this, guys? Mm -hmm. Go on. I've been trading these stories now for two days. You know why? Why? Because they're worth it. Okay. <laughs> no, we'll be the so, judge actually, of that. Yeah, we'll be the judge of that. Exactly <laughs> right, oh, very good, Gavin, very good. <laughs> we'll be the judge of that, Vaughn. Just get on with this show. Okay, um... I've been saying that you're playing Russian roulette with this household appliance. I'm telling you now what that appliance is. Here's the headline. Public playing Russian roulette with old dryers. What, tumble dryers? Yeah. People who use faulty tumble dryers are, quote, playing Russian roulette, the local government association has said. It's funny, though, because the film The Deer Hunter, mm. I feel, wouldn't have had the same drama. No. If they'd have been sat around a tumble dryer. Oh, just a faulty old tumble dryer. Yeah. It's not the same. With the no. guy going, Mow! 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 And they're just sitting there, and, <laughs> and just, the guy just slapping. puts a pair of jeans in a tumble dryer <laughs> and then sits on it. <laughs> mow! Mow! Don't, don't put the coin in. Don't, don't put the coin in. Put the coin in. Do it, Mikey. Do it, Mikey. Mow! Yeah. Mow! It wouldn't have the same uh, impact. And then everyone just in, that, in those scenes, everyone just like in a laundrette, just their heads going round... <laughs> like that, just waiting for it to go. go. Would have liked the drama. It, it would, would yeah. yeah. It wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have been quite same. quite the same film. I've got more to say on this. How do you know if you've got a faulty? Is it have to be really old or? I don't I'm going to tell, yeah, tell you now, Gav. Um, the LGA, that's local government association, has said that they're they're playing Russian roulette. We're playing Russian roulette with these things. Uh, the emergency <laughs> services are called out to an average of three fires a day, caused by dangerous appliances. Okay. That's not really Russian roulette, is it? If everyone on, if everyone who's got a tumble dryer is playing it, mm. that's a, let's just say that's a big chamber, yeah. isn't <laughs> it? Yeah. That's like three bullets in fifty million. Sw anyway, we'll it's not right Russian roulette. Yeah, it's not no. Russian roulette. No. Uh, but it's good to alert us to the danger. Uh, Jeremy Hilton, chairman of the LGA's Fire Services Management Committee, urged manufacturers to recall faulty machines uh, rather than repair them saying that they were risking the lives of millions. Mind you, I'm going to get mine checked, so it's panicked me a bit. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's made me nervous about mine now. I've had it for a few yeah, years. Everyone's thinking, yeah, maybe I left that one on at home. <laughs> what if I got a, so, a firebomb in my house? Yeah, there's the <laughs> car in front of you just on a U-turn. <laughs> everyone's just going back home. I left the dryer on. <laughs> TJ, TJ starts mass panic. Everyone's just thinking, I have left the dryer on, actually. Radio X. Johnny Vaughan. So much divides our nation at the moment, uh, but there's one thing unites us, it seems. And that is... Cyril the Squirrel! Are you ready for this? Uh, uh, the squirrel's really risen in my estimation since... Because the squirrel's behaviour has changed. In what way? Well, a, a while ago, about ten years ago, you're getting stories of papers from pensioners saying the squirrels literally wait for them in gangs to come home. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, there's one pensioner that said that in the mail. <laughs> 
that the, she recognises the ringleader. Yeah. And they wait for her. Oh, what, one of them pushes you over no, no, the no, other no, one? No, 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 but they, they were waiting for her in gangs. Okay. Uh, for her door to open, because they knew she took some time with the keys. Right. And then they all came in, and, and they were, like, making cereal. <laughs> no, just, she, she and looking went, for bank no, details. The way she was telling it, she said they nicked cereal. The way she painted it was actually getting bowls out. Literally having, like, tea round at hers. <laughs> and she made them seem so intelligent. Uh, but, it, but she was dismissed as a, as a, a local boob. Uh, anyway, Londoners unite to save Cyril the Cheeky Squirrel. And who is Cyril? I got I got this story off the internet. <laughs> Here it is. The paper net. Yeah, this is on page two of the internet. <laughs> um, hundreds of residents on a London development have signed a petition to save a grey squirrel after pet con- pest controllers were called in because the animal was, quote, hiding nuts in Aww. people's pot plants. <laughs> And it's been hiding nuts in pod plants. Pod That's plants. fine, isn't it? Nearly 250 people have signed the change.org petition in an attempt to stop the... And here's a word, you, you, whenever it crops up, gives you a shiver. Mm. Go on. And they only have it for vermin. But you ready for this? In an attempt to stop, quote, the exterminators. <laughs> Instantly, I see Daleks. Yep. Yeah. Don't you? It's like a rolling yeah. through an estate looking for squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> Men on segways with air rifles. Yeah. <laughs> You're so stupid, Kevin. You're a really pathetic individual, but that's just that's pathetic. If I had an extermination company, that's you, what you'd I'd use. You'd have a shotgun and you'd be on them. Okay, you ready for this? Go on. Um, the, the, the exterminators have been visiting the Royal Arsenal development in Bullwich, South East London. Some said the animal, which they've called Cyril, was, quote, like part of the community. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, fair enough. Gee, it's one of those words, it's one of those phrases I've always loathed. And, and, and which is one of those phrases when they talk about they've spoken to local community leaders. Yeah. And you find out there's no democratic basis for it. If I, I know people in areas who say, he, he, What's he know, man? He's, he's an idiot. <laughs> They'll literally say there's community leaders. And he it, gets quoted on the news as well, a it's community norm- it's, leader. It's, nor- it's normally someone who is from an ethnic background, but he's very well spoken. Mm. I think a lot of the people feel around here mm. uh, that uh, they're not getting... But they're not necessarily in touch with everyone. Who voted you, this community <laughs> leader? Police have spoken to community leaders. It's sort of implying there's like elders who are wiser and sit in a council. <laughs> yeah. You know, like that kind of... I don't know. You know what I mean, though, guys, right? Do you? It's like on the planet Vulcan. Spock's mob. <laughs> you know, they're just a bit wiser. Um, anyway... Uh, Anthony Coyle, a resident, said it appears some scoundrels have complained he's been hiding nuts in their pot plants and want him killed. His haters and killers must be stopped. Haters? Yeah, there's haters. <laughs> squirrel haters. Well, and the squirrels are player. Yeah, yeah, the squirrels are... <laughs> and he's got haters. He's got haters. And they're player haters. <laughs> Too many nuts. <laughs> yeah, because he's putting nuts in their pot plants. <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> Radio X. Every day, Gavin furnishes with a tale of heroics. Today is no exception. The Woodman, his hero. (laughs) Okay, today's hero, Johnny, is a man called Bertrand Picard. Tell me about Bertrand Picard. I think he's in the news at the moment, isn't he? This isn't an old one, Gavin. No, this is from today. He's... um a pi- he has created and piloting a pioneering solar-powered aircraft. Last night, it was soaring across the Atlantic, bringing its pilot and creator close to his dream of flying around the world just on the power of sunlight. Has he stopped? No, it's happening right now. He's on his way. Uh, let's see. He, it's, it, what, is, what is he doing? He's going non-stop. He took off from New York yesterday. Okay. Alone in the in the plane at 63 meter wingspan. 40 passengers. 200. Uh, and six foot wingspan. It's massive, this thing. That's oh. not Gavin. That's oh. enormous. It is. It's enormous. Um, it's flown in stages from Abu Dhabi via Asia across the Pacific. Oh, he's to gone the in US. stages. Yeah, but all on sun power. Yeah, there's I no know, other energy no, involved. No, but all on. It's got to be in one. Because it's got to be in one You've go. You've got to start somewhere. You've it's got, got to be to in one. No, people have done this before. What does he do? Then he's no, they haven't. No one's no one's managed yeah, to. Because then you can't. The point is, is, is does he go back, or is it actually is he flown right around the world? Because there might be a little bit. He's landed there, and then he's on the ground for a bit, and then he's taken off. That little bit is missing, isn't You're it? Being very pedantic. <laughs> Listen, it matters a lot. If you think the first man ever to orbit the Earth, Yuri Gagarin, he didn't orbit the Earth first of all. 
He was 1,500 miles short. That's why he doesn't hold the record for it. He's the first man in space. He's not the first man to orbit the Earth. Anyway. These, these are really important distinctions. The Atlantic crossing will take him four days. Where's he going to stop there? Hawaii? He's oh, no, sorry, that's Pacific. Go on. Slightly shorter than the Japan to Hawaii flight last June, but this okay. week's 3,100-mile journey is the most daunting because of the weather. He's doing the uh, the similar route to Charles Lindbergh. Hang on, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. When did he, when did he fly across the uh, Pacific? Last June? Yes. So he's Gav. doing it in stages. I know, but Gav... What? Well, he's just, it seems to me he's, he's milking he's it. A bit. thousand miles no, again, in a he's, plane he's with milk, no fuel in it. He's Johnny. milking it. No a bit. fuel in it, Johnny. No well, fuel. No, no, Three thousand miles. Do it, either do it in one. Okay, what's he stopping for? He hasn't got to fill up with petrol, has he? <laughs> <laughs> you know? He doesn't need to stop. You're either going to say, the point is to make the point clear, yeah? You just don't do it in little bunny hops. Well, 3,000 miles is not a bunny hop. No, it no, really isn't. Sleep, Charles Lindbergh's uh, crossing was amazing. Charles Lindbergh. But I'm just saying to you all, okay, yes, we, it's great that he's done this. He's taken two years to go around the world in stages. But what I'm saying is, is the point about it is, is it's solar power. He doesn't have to fill, I guess, at night. Night time, he'll have not trouble. Just okay, that, okay. Not just that, but if he was in a, a solar powered plane, which is probably quite slow, he'd fall asleep. Yeah, that's wouldn't true. He? No, we know that. So he has to do it. As long as he's doing the whole thing on sun power, I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm impressed. Yeah, I am. I bet, I bet when he starts to see that sun go down, I bet he himself. <laughs> <laughs> Bertrand <laughs> Picard. Himself, I'm thinking, oh, no, it's sunset. Come on. Come on. And he's got no way of going. All right, sorry. Bertrand, Bertrand Picard. Bertrand Picard. Though your progress is slow and you've made many stops. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Vaughan, four till seven. Thing sort of salutes you. Great. The best of Johnny Vaughan. Earlier on, Gavin and I uh, were talking about our, our adventures in Manchester, where we found ourselves carrying someone else's tandem bicycle up the stairs and cursing <laughs> tandem owners because I cut my hand. Uh, we've got a, a tandem owner on the uh, on the line now. I think Caroline is are you there? Hi, yep, yeah, I'm here. Brilliant. How are yeah. you, Caroline? I'm very good, thank you. Made okay. my day, so I got a call. <laughs> oh, <laughs> big oh. fan of the show. We listen every day, like to, to your show. So yeah, it's really good. Oh, excellent. Where are you? Yeah. Uh, Stockport. You're in Stockport. Oh, do you know what? We go yeah. through there on the way to Manchester. Yes, we did. Yeah. I know. <laughs> there's a hat museum there. <laughs> Get in there! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Let's talk about tandems. Now, you own a tandem. Well, yeah, it's my boyfriend's tandem. Yeah, he's a bit. He's a bike mad cyclist. Yeah, so yeah, uh, it... when I met him, he already owned the tandem. He didn't have anybody to ride it with. He already owned uh, the tandem. Hey, wait a second, wait yeah. a second, wait a second. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you met a guy who had a tandem, but, but no yeah. partner. Oh, no partner. I've never he heard of that it, one. Um, that's the most, yeah. uh, just the most blatant pulling technique I've ever known. <laughs> <laughs> just ride around town with an empty tandem, just looking hopeful, winking, <laughs> winking at women. <laughs> it, it might work in a Ferrari. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you get a yeah, proper well, woman yeah. with a tandem. You get shallow women with a Lamborghini. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. Well, yeah. So so did it sort of appeal to you straight away or did he have to talk you into it? Um kind of kept it quite quiet at first and then um obviously when I came round the first time it was there in the in the hallway blocking yeah. up the taking up all the room. And how did it make <laughs> you and when you saw it how did you feel describe <laughs> describe how your heart sank? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of just went along with it. It's really odd, and now I'm quite. <laughs> wait a second! Wait a around. second! Caroline, did you just say I, I kind of went along with it? What do you mean you yeah. went along with it? You sort of said, "Hey, that's great." When you just didn't well, mean well, it. Well, he kind of. Uh, I think he like he coaxed me into it with a sort of the promise of oh, we'll just we'll just go around the block once to test it because he's kind of done it up from it was a wreck when he bought it and he's done it up so he's like oh, I'll just go around the block once to test it. And then that kind of turned into like, well, we can go to the pub on it because then we can drink. <laughs> we have to worry about driving. Okay, do you think if you'd failed the first tandem <laughs> test? Do you think he was auditioning girlfriends whether they would be able to <laughs> ride with him or not? No, he was doing baby steps, literally. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. And then it then was the, the pub. <laughs> yeah, it's the best way to get around. It, it, you, what, you're, you're a real convert then, are you now? Yeah, and everywhere you go, everybody loves it. Like, everyone beeps and smiles. Like, you can't you can't ride past someone. There's yeah, always yeah. someone miserable at a bus stop on their phone, and as soon as they see it, they look up and give you a big grin. Yeah. Um, I got yeah, to tell you though. I got to tell you. I mean, that's a great. It's a great thing, but it's because clowns have them. <laughs> 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 I'm going to break into you gently here. 
<laughs> I know. I texted in because I didn't want. Uh, I didn't, people have got misconception that it's only for older. You know, the older generation. You don't see tandems anymore. But no. No, no. You. We're ne- doing there, it. there never was a tandem era. Don't fool yourself. <laughs> there was an era of oh, motorcycles God. and cycles. There was no era. Didn't they have um, tandem penny farthings? No. The tandem is the tandem <laughs> era is now. There was never a time in British history where couples were going around on tandems. It's a good. It's a good looking tandem. It's is it? Well, you you, yeah. des- you described it as what was it? A sweet Peugeot. Yeah, it's a Peugeot. It's a Peugeot road bike, so it's like a racing kind of looks like a racing bike, but and, and it's kind of been done up now. Do you? I mean, this is a this is a. I put. I'm going to put this very gently, but do you go behind <laughs> or in front? Yes, yeah, yeah. The stoker sits on the back. So <laughs> a stoker. <laughs> things we make a note. Things we've learned today. That'll be at the end. So, you, so, go, yeah. so you, you're the, you stoke, and presumably because you stoke the boiler, which is him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. So, it is so he's in front, and and yeah. and and so really, all you see he's is got- the, all you see all day is his sort of. His back and his behind. and his pumping behind. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, right. I see. Okay, okay I get it. And That's why you like a, the tandem. Okay. He's a good cyclist, so it's fine. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you just check out his body all day. <laughs> yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah. Do you, can I just ask you one question? Let's clear up one mystery. Yeah. Do you sometimes just free wheel when he's pedalling away? Right. And, that, and that's probably well, why you like fixed, it. It's fixed, so if his pedals are moving, then mine have to move too, but I oh. can take, I'd usually take my feet off. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you take your feet off. Uh, last Especially question is, hill. do you wear identical outfits? No. Yay! No, you passed the test. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> do you know what? No. It's been so lovely to meet you. Uh, if there was a Radio <laughs> X tandem you. sticker we could give out, uh, I'd give oh. you, 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 you could take one. Uh, but there isn't. <laughs> Uh, but uh, no. thank you so much. Uh, it's been thank lovely you. to meet you, and and, and you <laughs> you ride safely. Remember, clowns can be thank funny you. in the circus, but on the roads, <laughs> yeah, right. Radio X. Johnny Vaughan. Radio X. Phil's here. Sons were on holiday. You're right there, Phil. Yeah, all good. Uh, Phil, do you know how old Roy Hodgson is? I, he does look old. No, how old, how old is he? Sixty-three. And that's without. I mean, he's definitely knowing. younger than Mick Jagger. I don't know. No, he is definitely younger than Jagger. He's younger than Jagger. I've, and I think by at least 15 years younger than Mick Jagger, which is odd if you thought you think of Roy Hodgson going on tour. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is on tour, isn't he? He's doing a European tour. He's 68. He's 68. He? How old's Mick Jagger? Um, I'll look it up. Sorry, I just find I'm, I'm obsessed at the moment with uh, with paralleling uh, uh, ages of uh, people from rock because I think rock keeps you young. <laughs> Do you? For some reason. Despite the yes, unhealthy you're right. lifestyle. He's 72. He's Mick 72. Jagger, yeah. So Mick Jagger's four year olds than Roy Hodgson. And yet, the thought of Roy Hodgson fronting the Stones would seem ludicrous to us. It would be very, very un- unexpected. Very, I can't get no satisfaction, Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly can't. Uh, but I try. Brown sugar. And I try. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I try. I try. But brown sugar. <laughs> How come you feel so good? <laughs> but I tell you what makes me laugh. Let me simplify it for you, Phil. Go on. Uh, when there was a press conference once in Holland, and they said, and this is when Steve McLaren was in charge of England, yeah. and uh, and they said, uh, and it was announced that the England coach has arrived, yeah, and Steve McLaren walked in. As I said at the time, you look at him, and you think he was driving it. <laughs> 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 He's just got the look. It's the it's the top but- button undone, isn't it? And the striped tie, short sleeve shirt. <laughs> Keep it down in the back, lads. Just it's- warning everyone not to bring any cans on board. But it's like yeah. it's like when they weigh up the England coats. They think to yourself. Would you look good behind the wheel of a coach? <laughs> I, th- I think the FA are taking it too literally. <laughs> they literally, they think England coach, the next word is driver. Do you think that was Hoddle's undoing? Because he doesn't look like a coach driver, Glenn Hoddle, does he? No, but then does he look like a pilot? No, uh, he's the third category, the unusual third category. Yeah. Uh, he looks like, you know, there's occasionally you'll get a really nice Mercedes or something. They'll t- just turn up. <laughs> just, just, no, instead of a Prius. Oh, what, for a taxi? Yes, yeah, for yeah. some reason there was no Priuses, Galaxies, whatever available. And actually, this right the resentful driver from the luxury end of the fleet comes and picks you up and you're sort of yeah do you mind not drinking that water in my car yeah. that's for the players that's, Glenn. That's, that's for the players themselves. That's, that's for the players themselves yeah he looks like someone he's not too happy about you using some of the executive stuff yeah you, know, you can see him just hide the mints in the glove compartment yeah not want you to use the Wi-Fi. that's Glenn isn't it quite tall as well so his seat's right back it's <laughs> slightly annoying <laughs> <laughs> 
What's I going to say? Oh, yes. Anyway, so Roy yesterday was at a training session. But anytime I look at England training sessions, I look at it. It's just, it's hard to believe that guys who earn this much money, mm. and yet they're waiting around still like it's their turn next to run the slalom. And I saw, <laughs> you know, this guy, I saw Wayne Rooney sort of running up, and he touched his, I tell you, touched, he touched one of the other players, and then they ran off. I'm thinking, wow. They're like these millionaires who's still out there with like bibs, ten year olds, yeah. Like, like just doing that thing where they you turn now it's your turn to run up and down <laughs> through the poles, and then you <laughs> and then the other one runs off and, and they were seeing which team could beat each other. I was thinking, what a great way to live your life. Like it's just this sort of PE lesson. A suspended childhood, isn't yeah. It? yeah. But then they had Roy in shorts. <laughs> <laughs> I thought if ever a man didn't need kit. Boots with studs. Yeah, yeah boots with studs, but he's just standing there, just in sh- in all the kit. I was thinking, <laughs> why are you do that? Radio X. Okay, I've got some bad news for you. I'm afraid the number of people celebrating the summer solstice at Stonehenge. It sounds like this. I'm trying to put in some weird tongue twister or <laughs> test of sibilance. Um, it fell by half this year. It was half the amount of revelers down there to watch the sun. Really? Yeah. Luckily, within the next half of the sentence, it is absolutely explained. Go on. Um, after an alcohol ban. Uh, <laughs> I thought you were going to say because of all the traffic going to Glastonbury. No, just, what, what amazes me about that is that it's just not the same unless you've had a couple of drinks. It's no. Uh, it's just not. It I doesn't have the uh, <laughs> mystical significance. Oh no, not it, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. The numbers. The vibrations the vi- are not the, the same. The <laughs> going through the energy within the ley lines. The uh, druids seem quite boring, actually, <laughs> when... Uh, <laughs> That's a fact, when you're sober, <laughs> you think, why am I talking to this? It's a wet rock. Bearded weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently the ley lines lack that flux, <laughs> coursing through them without the benefits of, of booze. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It wasn't as exciting this year. It wasn't like, quite as yeah, magical. You going down to Stonehenge, dear? <laughs> no. I think we're just watching from home, Mum. <laughs> no, I'm going to go to the pub. <laughs> and we, we might get some off-sales and just watch it in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... It just lost its it lost its sheen, Gav. No, I'm going to do it at home this year. I'm going to make my own yeah, stone and shit. Yeah, I'm a little stone and shit. I'll just put a couple of... Just a few planks. bricks end on. worked out where it was going to be. I just shoved a couple of planks in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> just went to say, we took advantage of a deal on cider and then I went, <laughs> just fine. <laughs> Right then, we'll have our own henge. Sodom. Own henge. <laughs> our own henge. <laughs> hey! Thank you, Gavin. Radio X. Johnny Vaughan. X. Tim Peake. Um, he wants to build a space base parked between Earth and the moon. They could build that within a decade. The European Space Agency announces the British astronaut Tim Peake said he would love to embark on a lunar mission. Yeah, so would I. Yeah. So how about, do you want to guess about How about you've had your turn? <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> what gets me is that they're always saying that, yeah, of course now, I mean, with what they sent people to the moon with back in, uh, you know, 1969 there, now you've got that in an average, you know... Um, a watch. Water filter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> unit. <laughs> you know, you've got that in an average fridge. Yeah. they got that there now. Are you thinking, well... Why is it such a problem getting to the moon again? Yeah, why? It should be really this, easy. This should be easy now. Yeah. <laughs> you should you be know, able to do it with a car you know, stereo. You yeah. that huge, all those banks of people, and now it's just a kid at home with an app. Yeah. <laughs> sitting there. Yeah. Go ahead, Houston. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. just sit there. It just directs the whole operation. So, first, I don't see why it's such a problem. The next thing is, why don't we just send something? It's, it, the moon's near, right? I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's not easy to miss. No, it's quite big. In it's the sky. big. It's two hundred fifty thousand miles away, which is naff all. Yeah, they've got something on Mars, but I think we've got a right to at least a webcam on the moon. Yeah, good point. At Live any time, just to see footage. how it's uh, yeah. just to see how we're looking. It's really easy. It always faces the same way to us, so it, you, you've got no problem with with the with the moon turning. The angle, yeah, no problem at all. No. Just to always have it there, and also perhaps it could sniff around for all the NASA stuff just to show people it's there. And we've got this lunar thing, and you can direct it. And we say, look, there it is. There's the, there's the s- flag. You don't even need to send uh, people to the moon to do that. No, you could just send a drone. Just send a camera up there, yeah, just yeah. to say, look, there's the flag. Now shut up. Yeah, about the lunar <laughs> thing, right? There's the footprints. Yeah. Now shut up. They're still there. They're there's still no there. Wind. Yeah, go on, do one eighty, do a three sixty. Show them you're on the moon. 
And then they'll say, that's yeah, not no, on no, the moon. That's a studio yeah. in New Mexico. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, Area 51. Because yeah. you can see the flags like shaking. Yeah. Um, anyway, so let's campaign not for this, you know, ridiculous. I mean, he wants to build a place uh, where, where the Earth and the Moon's gravity balance. There's a kind of crossroads. This is our deep space habitat. No, Tim, you want it just to be your deep space habitat. Where you it was. Just... It's like a sort of Watford Services to the yes, Moon. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it is. It's like Watford Gap. <laughs> <laughs> what this? People's truckers walking around looking a bit lost <laughs> at a music arcade with people actually playing those driving games, having just been on the road. Yeah. Which I found fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> just gambling. You got there's just space for them by fruit machines, just pumping them. <laughs> just pumping fruit machines, just looking bored, just tapping the button. Anyway, Tim Peake wants this. Uh, my point is, I know that everyone wants to uh, go to the moon and, and they're saying how they can grow crops there and things like that. But I, I just still think the money's better employed. We've got vast amounts of uninhabitable land on Earth. Mm. You got Australia for a start. Yeah. That's virtually another planet. And you got deserts, and you got if you want uninhabitable places where there's actually more of a chance of water, then then what's wrong with Earth? It's just so much cheaper than flying off. And we know there's gravity and air and stuff. Yeah, and surely all that sunshine in the desert in Australia could power a fridge. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely keep your house cold. Yeah, it's definitely actually that's a very good point, Gal. <laughs> Solar powered fridges then cool down Australian out. That's right. <laughs> Gav, it's a no-brainer. It is a no-brainer. Well, we sorted that out. Radio X. Johnny Vaughan. Radio X. Norgard, uh, the vaccine's right here, which reminded us of uh, a, t- a-, a Tempo Tudor a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. And we were kind of rocking along in here in, in a quite, a embar- quite an embarrassing way. Gav was air guitaring, I was drumming. And, uh, <laughs> t- it turns out, actually, in our air lineup. Um, it turns out Phil's really slotted in well. We needed a drummer. Oh, he's one of the best yeah. air bass players. He's a really good air player. And, and Sai is getting so good on the drums. We're really becoming, them, I would say, one of the best air bands. <laughs> yeah. Going. <laughs> There's something we can have on the website. It's okay. an air band super group. What, the battle of the air bands? There's always miming at the moment. No one's ever done the group. That's true. The whole lot of them really into it. The group <laughs> event. Although earlier on during one of the songs, Simon and I were even sharing a non-existent microphone while we played non-existent <laughs> That's guitars. Right, which was an you extraordinary were. moment as we became an air beat combo. <laughs> it was amazing. For the choral, that was. <laughs> yeah, that was for the choral, yeah. We really get into it, rocking like mop top style. With no guitars, outfits, mop tops. <laughs> I was just a bald man looking like a lunatic. Yeah. Again. Again. Right. This is uh, just something you might want to get involved with. The annual World Nettle Eating Championships. (laughs) Just to tell you, next year, (laughs) it's been won by a contestant called Thorn. Are you talking about eating them raw? Yes. I've heard of nettle soup. I'm not eating... Why would you bite a a nettle? This guy ate 86 foot of stinging nettles. Some people are seriously bored, no, aren't but again, they? it's in a village in Marshwood. Well, you're too frightened to eat nettles. <laughs> I've been all my life. I've never done me any harm. And then they'll pop them in their mouth. And they'll sort of pretend if they've got a bit on the chin, it's done. They're like, no, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. I don't see the fuzzies. Look, I put it all over my hand. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> I don't know. Because I'm from I'm country. So I'm completely different to you genetically. Because I'm from the country. So things don't affect me in the same way. See, for instance. I know I, I'm born. I know. I, I seriously. I, 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 things don't affect. They bank not have never affect me in the same way as you do. I can drink petrol. Stuff like that. No problems. And it doesn't bother me. Literally, I sleep in just cow pat. And then in the morning, we just burn the bed. And that's fine. Because I'm country, right? I can't believe it's a lot of nettles. <laughs> it is that, a lot of that man has got a lot of nettles. Oh, I'll drink from a slop bucket. <laughs> I don't mind. It doesn't bother me. I never I'll watch. have gravel with milk instead of Oh, I'll of eat cereal. gravel with that. I'll eat gravel just with pig's blood. Yeah. It doesn't bother me. I'm country. Delicious. We all do it. We all do it. Radio X. Johnny Vaughan. Hey, earlier on, I, along with uh, a couple of other eagle-eared listeners. Is it eagle-eared? <laughs> I can't think of the equivalent. Hawk. No. But hawk eared. Bat eared. Bat eared. No, they read sonar, they're complicated and, and also weird. Bats are weird. Plug eared? Plug I don't know. That's another that's phone. Good in. Hearing. Now what are you trying to imitate? That's no creature at all. Big ears. No, that's not a creature that looks like that. You're that's doing like, a Mel and Kim dance. It's like dopey. It's just like dopey. <laughs> dopey eared. Dopey eared. Thank you. So, so yes, that's a lovely one. Eagle eyed and Dopey eared. That's the way to be, my son. We've been discussing the equivalent of, of eagle eyed but for hearing. Yes. Because I said eagle eared yesterday. I knew it was wrong and I knew the texts were going to start coming in, which they did. Um, we tried owl eared. 
Gav, do owls have a good... Uh, have they got good hearing? Very good hearing, They've apparently. got amazing eyesight. Yeah, they do, especially at night. Well, but well, yeah, they can see the traces of things. They generally follow things by their tra- trail of pee. Really? Uh, yeah, that's, what, that's how they see things. They've got like ultraviolet thing they can pick it out. But... You read too much. I don't. I've just been... I've just... So I've been doing great... falconry! <laughs> <laughs> okay. They've got great eyes and ears. They've yes, got they, it all they, going on. Do you know why? And they only come out like because everything hates owls and picks on them. Aww. All other birds pick on them. They're not a really powerful bird of prey at all. Why do they pick on owls? Pick, they just do. Because uh, they're just different. They're you just know? jealous, aren't they're they? They're just different. Um, they're also not that intelligent. We think they are because their faces are configured more like our, ours. But mm. in fact, like in Winnie the Pooh, owls, are, are, they're not that smart at all. Right. right. They're quite a stupid bird. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's sad, isn't it? Right, let's crack on. There. Sorry, owl fans. I do love them, though. Uh, I'm yeah. a big owl. I'm, I used to know one called Bernie, an eagle owl. It was lovely. I, I did. I know, but it just sounds weird like he was your mate down the pub. Yeah, but even though he's just a really nice owl, he's really lazy. Okay, uh, <laughs> here's some suggestions. If anyone remembers Brave Star from Kids TV, you'll remember Ears of the Wolf. Yeah. Yes. And he also had the strength of a bear and the speed of a puma. Yes. Yeah, Pete Gav? in Walton's offering, isn't it lark-lobed? I no. thought everyone knew that. <laughs> lark yeah, nice. If you could end your texts with, come on, surely you all know. <laughs> yeah. uh, a couple of you have sent in texts with, my gran always used to say, and you just made them up. So carry on doing that. Um, go on. It's like a hawk that's come from Phil in Kingston. But well, aren't we going with eyes like a hawk? Already? Yes, actually, it's over. You're right. Um, what we got? Dave in Southampton. Surely it's wife eared. At least I can't <laughs> say anything <laughs> under my breath hey. without my wife hearing me. We we could have we could have a winner there. Yeah, <laughs> wife eared. Wife eared <laughs> is fantastic. <laughs> Tim and Chichis says he's got the ears of a duck billed platypus. I don't know if they hear all right, but I think it's fantastic. Um, I, looked it, I looked it up online. The fennec fox has got the biggest ears in proportion to its body. Oh, it's <laughs> really animal. cute as well. They are really cute. So eagle-eyed, we can have fennec-eared. Fennec-eared. Yeah. Fennec-eared. It's a bit obscure, though. They it go, is. What? They might also think you're talking about the uh, the former frontman for the Meteors. Well, Neil People and Darby's Fennec. People <laughs> Fennec. Neil and Darby says he's uh, he calls his friend's daughter elephant ears as she never misses anything, even if she's in another room. Okay, okay. Elephant eared. Yeah, but you have to watch that in this politically correct age because you might be attributing or assigning your child with different ear imagery, s- imagery, and they right. might think you'll get a complex about their ear size. Okay. Maybe, might- but, but no, but maybe she has got large ears. <laughs> I think it's more because she's just good at hearing. Okay, okay. Gav, have you got any others? Yeah, the serval. It's a cat with massive ears. It Thanks, looks- Gav. Serval eared. <laughs> I'm clear. offering serval eared. Serval eared. Okay, yeah. thank you very much indeed. Listen, do you know what? I don't think we've nailed it yet. This is no. really up for grabs. This is your chance to enter. Uh, the, the English language. And then we'll move on to footed. Yeah. <laughs> yes, every week. Every week we'll build up our dictionary of phrase and fable. Legged. The Radio X dictionary of phrase and fable. <laughs> yeah. Fingered. What would finger be? Exactly. No, armed. armed. Legged. Armed. Legged. Do everything. Head. <laughs> <And> chested. <laughs> <laughs> Gav, you're insane. 83936. We still haven't nailed this ear Spock thing Spock-eared. Spock-eared. That's Joe in Bedford. Okay, that's a leader so far. It's if not you can bad. go better than Spock-eared, you're good. <laughs> Radio X. Johnny Vaughan. X. Gav, I understand, and I'm trusting you for the first time here, you've seen something on the internet you want to tell us about. Yeah, this has just gone on, on the Guardian website. It says that police swooped on a picturesque Cotswold village after residents complained about fundraisers holding a rubber duck race. Police arrived in Burton on the Water, yeah. Gloucestershire, as a, as a branch of the volunteer organisation that organises free deliveries on motorcycles of blood. Uh, we're trying to raise money. Uh, they said suddenly a police car came along, two officers went over and spoke to people. It was like something out of hot fuzz. Uh, some residents backed the police, arguing that motorcycles had been parked on the village green and had, quote, shattered the peace. You see, this is what I hate about village life. They then said charity events were not allowed in this area on Sundays. Of course not, because Sunday is not a day for charity. No. Do you know, I'm not a big fan of village. I, I've lived in a village for a bit where we were considered spooky outsiders from London. Right. And, and we used to have to, I used to I cut the mates in the, in the village, we used to have to run between each other's houses. Well, so you don't got you didn't get tackled by yes, locals. Yes, exactly right. <laughs> and thrown into a ditch. Yeah, no. Well, okay. Well, there's an example. Gav and I have a friend who's six foot eight, and he's in a Gloucestershire Cotswold village. Right, Cotswold village. He's six foot eight. Mm. Inside legs, thirty eight. 
but his waist, his waist, he's only 28. <laughs> Sorry, that was part of the song we used to sing to him. And um, we were there on New Year's Eve in this village in the Cotswolds, and because the locals couldn't accept the fact he was six foot eight, they threw him in the pond <laughs> <laughs> on the stroke of midnight. Ah, uh, village life. And do you know what the funny thing was? Is Charlie, our mate, he sort of accepted it. <laughs> he sort of laid back and said, I accept that these are the rules, that I am too tall for midnight. <laughs> and to that, not be in a pond. Yes, it was, so we were talking about this the other day. I can't remember if we had to talk about it on air, but they threw him, they're like proper like, one, two, <laughs> three, four. Hey. They threw him in. I got, I got, I got, um, I got in trouble in, in this village. Um, a friend of ours accidentally pressed the reject button on the jukebox. And they're quite touchy about jukeboxes. And he accidentally pressed his button. Because someone had put on the wrong Dean Martin tune. <laughs> and we tried to ingratiate ourselves with them by playing some Dean, because we were come on earlier and we understood this was just, this was went down really well. Yeah. They suddenly we were all right. And um, <laughs> and, um someone rejected a Dean Martin record, and this guy's went mad. And he says, You mess around with what you like in this pub. You do not mess around with Dino. <laughs> you do not mess around with Dino. And then he looks at us, he says, It's a Dino pub. And then later on, we thought we'd further ingrace Jake so we've got a bit of more Dino. But someone accidentally put on some Gene Pitney. Oh. Yeah. Incendiary but, behavior. But, but it was the wrong Gene Pitney. Oh, no. It was 24 hours. So we, so we quickly we found this reject button. So we rejected that as well, really quickly. <laughs> His bloke goes over, he goes, what are you doing? <laughs> Just doing my head in this. And I said, don't tell me. It's a Gene Pitney pub too. And he goes, bloody Ray is. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Gene Pitney pub. And a Dean Martin Yeah, no, it was pub. a Dino pub. Dino Martini. Yeah, anyway, they end up seeing my mate in the pond. So, um, <laughs> all in all, that was my brush with village life. <laughs> there were no werewolves, though. We made the mistake <laughs> of walking in in golf gear. Yeah. Which already made one of them say, are you lot like part of a band, are you? <laughs> like, what? what? Because we're dressed for <laughs> golf. What band looks like Yeah, that? are you lot part of like a band, are you? <laughs> it's what, weird. What, what, what we call, yeah, the swingers. <laughs> Johnny Vaughan. Radio. Radio X. I Go promised on. you the most outrageous, unsubstantiated claim ever made in the history of cosmology. Okay, are we ready for this? That's quite a claim in itself. Okay, you know I'm obsessed with on the uh, on the on the history and discovery channel. They always say things like, if we look at the the hieroglyphics, we can see the Egyptians were clearly experimenting with some form of time travel. Space travel. Yeah. <laughs> It's not clear. That's not clear. We've seen something that looks like a bird. We're a long way from space travel here. Could have been a bird. Okay. Here's 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 another example. Apart from the word clearly, which the History Channel, uh, National Geographic Channel, overuse. Yeah. The real overuse. <laughs> clearly, there was some kind of phenomenon in the sky. Um, here's a beauty. This is the use of may have been. Ah. ah. Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Go on. Venus may have been stripped. This is in the Times. <laughs> I'm reading it online. Yeah, go on. There's my iPad. Uh, Venus may have been stripped of its may have been stripped of its oceans by an electric wind that sent its water. Get this for terminology. Whizzing off into space. <laughs> Very a, technical. A study suggests. Whoa! Okay, so we've got on. we've got a may have. <laughs> we've, we've got, got a, a study suggests, and we've got a use of the word whizzing. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to it then? Well, and then of course it just goes whizzing <coughs> off into space. That's space. that's what when I was at school, uh, it, scientists. When I was a boy, um, when our teachers didn't really know the answer, yeah, they'd use the word whizzing generally in <laughs> science things. <laughs> well, what happens then? Well, well, they can't be asked to explain it, so they just yeah. go, "Well, it just I would think it would just go whizzing off into space." <laughs> <laughs> Where did the water go? Um, whizzing off. I don't know. I'm not convinced. I'm no. not either. Venus may have been stripped of its own by, in quotes, an electric wind. What does that even mean? I, we don't know. Yeah, what does that mean? We've had we solar wind. Know. That's it's, just sun particles. Oh, come on. We all know about electric wind. It sounds like a band. <laughs> it does sound like, it sounds like an 80s band. Yeah, a woodwind band. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> electric oboe. Yeah, right, okay. Uh, it They've got a wall of amps. <laughs> it sends its water whizzing off into space. Uh, that's all I can say. There's nothing. There's nothing else. To nothing be. concrete in there. There's at nothing all. concrete at all. Radio X. Johnny Vaughan. Do you know what it's time for? What? <laughs> a random graffiti. Random graffiti. Seemingly meaningless. 
Random graffiti, random graffiti. Why don't you send it in to us? 1890. That's just a little flourish I've added. It all started when I saw the word uh, lager written in large letters on a wall in Clapham Junction. Then you sent in your examples of odd, and I would say often meaningless graffiti, which is just how we like it. Uh, please let us know your acts of random graffiti text 83936 or at Radio X, at Radio X or 83936. Here's one from Sarah in Ballam, an absolute beauty. I, it's almost worth me going down uh, to Tooton Common to see this one, where Sarah saw this written under a bridge. It says, Toys need lessons. <laughs> <laughs> it's genius. That's so random. Gav. Yeah. Uh, Mike in Lincoln says, in Bungalows and Bears Bar in Sheffield, on a toilet wall, it says, you can never be sad in a JCB. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know what? He I've, must be right. I've, I've, I've had a day in one. And, and do you know what? A second to learn a life. It, you can get quite good in about five minutes. Really? Yeah. Five minutes and you're digging. And five minutes also, you can put the, the, the shovel, what's it called? The bucket down yeah. at the front. And, and lift yourself up and down with it. Yeah. And do stupid I must admit, I've never met anyone who wouldn't have a go in one of those things. Gav, they're so easy. They're such Are fun. They? When you go, wee, going right, sorry. <laughs> uh, on a bus stop in Cheddar, someone's graffitied, uh, drink milk, get fat. <laughs> That's uh, Becky in Glastonbury. Thank you very much, Becky. Absolute beauty, Gav. Uh, this is from someone called Cheeseball78 on Twitter, and this was just found on a wall. Can I have a biscuit, please? I'm starving. <laughs> what song just graffitied that? Just a biscuit. <laughs> oh, oh, actually graffiti that on a wall. Just please. Ah, ah, just great, Gav. Uh, I'm so happy I'm alive. This God. is from Bennett on a blank road sign in Rochdale. I love breakfast muffins. <laughs> Again, anyone just putting food just preferences? Really? <laughs> Think about it. It went through someone's mind when they had a pen and a wall. They think, I'm going to write that. What shall I write? What shall I write? I don't know. What did you just say? You were talking about how you love bread muffins. Just write that. Yeah, yeah. I love. <laughs> okay, you ready? So I went too far into the mindset of the random graffiti artist. Um, on a building site in East Dulwich, I saw, <laughs> written in red paint. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> written in red paint on a porter cabin. Bear Grylls, just a poor man's Peter Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Johnny Vaughan. Radio X. Radio X. That was the Johnny Vaughan 4 till 7 thing podcast. Don't forget, you can listen to us every day. What time are we on, Gav? Uh, four till seven. Is it four till seven? That's during the week. We're also on eight till 11 Sunday mornings, and we do the kicker mat. Every Saturday at 11 o'clock. We certainly do. But this is on 4 till 7 every day, That's isn't right. it? That's right, 4 till 7. It certainly is. Um, and also, uh, as Gav just mentioned the kickabout, I wasn't because I know it upsets Big Sigh. Uh, but uh, you can also download the, the kickabout. If you if you enjoyed this podcast and you want you, you really think, God, I just want some more of those. Guys. So many of you downloading that kickabout <laughs> podcast.